Penance. Is the Roman Catholic Church exceeding Scripture again? Penance is, according to the Roman Catholic Church, the sacrament of reconciliation that reestablishes a right relationship between God and a wayward Catholic. It is something the person does. Penance is always, by its very nature, a liturgical action and therefore an ecclesial and public action. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1482. And consists of a greeting from the priest, the reading of the Bible, an exhortation to repentance, confession to a priest, the acceptance of penance, absolution from the priest, and a prayer of thanksgiving, CCC 1480. Roman Catholicism teaches that penance is necessary for salvation for those who have fallen after baptism, just as baptism is necessary for salvation for those who have not yet been reborn, CCC 980. The penitent person must willingly submit to its requirements of having a contrite heart, perform verbal confession, and be completely humble. CCC 1450. It is part of the process that restores the person to God's grace. CCC 1468-1496. It includes works of reparation. CCC 1491. It cleanses a person preparing for a confirmation so he can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 1310. It reconciles a person to the Roman Catholic Church, CCC 1469. Penance can be performed for the dead, CCC 1032. And with faith, it is part of the process of conversion to Christ, CCC 1470. According to the New St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism, Volume 1, 1969, page 141, penance is a sacrament by which sins committed after baptism are forgiven. It goes on to state in question 171 that in order to receive the sacrament of penance worthily, the Roman Catholic must first examine his conscience, second be sorry for his sins, third make up his mind not to sin again, fourth confess his sins to a priest, and fifth be willing to do penance the priest gives him to do. Thus we see that this so-called sacrament is a works-based means of gaining forgiveness of sins from God. This is in contradiction to scripture. A right relationship with God is achieved through faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and not by our works, or a combination of our works and God's grace, because our works are nothing, nothing more than filthy rags, Isaiah 64, 6. And I've gone over these verses in other videos, but uh, I guess I'll have to go over them again. Being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, Romans 3, 24. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Romans 4, 3. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is reckoned as righteousness. Romans 4, 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1. Much more than, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Romans 5, 9. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Romans 11.6 For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Alright, no mention of works here. As you can see, the Bible teaches us that we are made right with God by faith apart from works. Apart from works. Notice how the Bible contrasts faith and works when it comes to being made right with God. The Bible rejects works of any kind as a means of being made right with God. You'd think that this would be clear to the Roman Catholic Church, but it isn't. The New St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism, Volume 2, 1969, paragraph 199 says, The priest gives us a penance after confession that we may make some atonement to God for our sins. Sounds like Mormonism. Receive help to avoid them in the future and make some satisfaction for the temporal punishment due to them. What is amazing in this quote is that it is not Christ's sacrifice on the cross that is the focus of atonement for our sins. Oh, man. But the works of the individual via penance. This is in blatant contradiction to Scripture, which says that we are cleansed of our sins by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ, not by our works. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Romans 9.14. That's a question he's asking. There's another one. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. In the blood of Jesus, his Son cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, seven. The scriptures teach us that Christ's blood cleanses us of all sin. Not some, not part, 
but all. This includes our sins of the past, present, and future, and it is not necessary to have our sins forgiven via our effort. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. Galatians 2.21 Jesus did not have to die. He died needlessly if you still have to do something in order to get that salvation. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? May it never be. For if a law had been given which was able to import life, or impart life, excuse me, then righteousness would indeed have been based on law. But the scripture has shut up all men under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Galatians 3.21 Those are strong words from Christ himself, the Bible. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Romans 11.6 You see, all the cults, the non-Christian cults, not, I'm not saying cults, but the non-Christian cults, they all don't understand what grace is. It's no longer grace if it's on the basis of works. That's exactly what the whore of Babylon, or excuse me, the Roman Catholic Church has. The Roman Catholic Church does not understand grace because it's adding works to grace. They're using grace as an infusion inside their body. They infuse this substance called grace that enables them to earn their salvation in part by works. All right. The Roman Catholic teaching is wrong because it is contrary to Scripture. And it's an essential, so you don't want to be contrary on the essentials. The essential doctrines of Christianity, that is. It uses penance, works that a person does as a means to become right with God. Atonement for Sins Remember the New St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism, Volume 2, 1969, Paragraph 199, says that penance, or in other words, some work you got to do, makes atonement for sins. Let's look at what atonement means. According to the Harper's Bible Dictionary, atonement is the means by which the guilt punishment chain produced by violation of God's will is broken, as well as the resulting state of reconciliation, atonement with God. And the earlier meaning of the English word atonement was the reconciliation of two estranged parties. In the Old Testament, priests made atonement for the sins of the people. So the priest shall make atonement for them, and they shall be forgiven. Leviticus 4.20 Thus the priest shall make atonement for him in regard to his sin, and he shall be forgiven. Leviticus 4.26 And the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord, and he shall be forgiven for any one of those things which he may have done to incur guilt. Leviticus 6.7 So, atonement brings forgiveness of sins according to the Old Testament by a priest making sacrifices. But the Old Testament system is not in effect today in this regard because Christ has come and offered a single and eternal sacrifice. Hebrews 10, 10 through 11. The Old Testament priests were not able to cleanse us via their animal sacrifices. Hebrews 10, 4. Their sacrifices were a representation of the one true sacrifice of Christ. Hebrews 8, 35. Since we now have that one and true sacrifice, we don't need to do anything to make atonement for our sins since atonement was made by Jesus uh, on the cross. Uh. Can we atone for others? There is a sense in which others can make atonement for people. And it came about on the next day that Moses said to the people, You yourselves have committed a great sin, and now I am going up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Exodus 32.30 We see this explained in the New Testament as well. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily, like those high priests who offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, and then for the sins of the people. Because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Hebrews 7, 26-28 But when we come to the New Testament, we see that the atoning work for sin is centered around the sacrifice of Jesus. Whereas the Old Testament typified the coming atonement, the New Testament realizes it in the person of Christ. The Old Testament made allowances for one person, i.e. a priest, to make atonement for others so that their sins might be removed. Leviticus 4, 20, 26, 6, 7, etc. The New Testament teaches that it is Christ alone who makes the atonement by which our sins are removed. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. 1 Peter 2.24 When he had made purification of sins, Hebrews 1.3. Also see Hebrews 2.17 and Hebrews 10.10-11. 10 in conclusion, we can see that the Roman Catholic system of penance is an unbiblical, works-based system that keeps the Roman Catholic in submission to the sacramental legislation of the Mother Church. Instead of the Roman Catholic Church pointing to Christ alone for the forgiveness of sins and reconciliation with God, it teaches that a person must perform works to make himself right with God. Furthermore, we have seen that the scriptures clearly teach that our position in righteousness with God is not based upon anything that we do. On the contrary, to the exclusion of our works, the scriptures clearly teach that we are justified before God by faith. In other words, it is by faith alone, in Christ alone, in his work alone, that makes us right with God. There is no way 
that anyone is able to remove his sin through any of his sin-stained efforts. The Roman Catholic Church, because it adds works to the finished work of Christ in order to be made right with God, thus preaches a false gospel. But even though we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to that which you received, let him be accursed. 